Cool. Danae, uh, I first heard of Indiegogo when I came across a... Have you heard of Coder Dojo? It's a, it's a software movement in Ireland where kids... Well, all around the world now where kids are learning to code. But one of the kids was trying to make his own video game and he was 10 years of age and he needed a Mac. So he went on Indiegogo and he managed to get the backing and he bought his Mac that way. So I just thought I'd tell you that story to begin with. But Indiegogo, I mean, how does it differ from uh, other uh, fundraising sites like, say, Kickstarter and, and those? Well, thank you for sharing that story. I live for our customers, so every time I hear the, the impact of how a crowdfunding campaign changed their life, it, it ma makes everything worthwhile, so thank you. Um, so when I teamed up with my co-founders in 2008 to launch Indiegogo, we launched with the mission to democratize fundraising, and we've kept that mission. So Indiegogo is different in very um, kind of a few very specific re ways. Uh, first, uh, I'll just say that Indiegogo is uh, now the leading global crowdfunding platform. Uh, where anyone anywhere in the world can create a campaign for absolutely anything and we're almost in 200 countries now um, we have campaign owners across the world and we're distributing millions of dollars every single week to campaign owners across the world but what makes indiegogo specifically different and unique is a few very specific things and the first is that we're completely open so what that means is there's no judgment there's no application there's no waiting you can get started right away if you have an idea this morning you can create your campaign this afternoon and you can be raising money tonight it's that easy we're also global, so anywhere in the world you can create a campaign. Anywhere in the world you can fund. Um, all you need is a bank account or a PayPal account, so it's very simple. We've been very specific about building a global infrastructure to make it very easy for campaign owners, wherever you are, to raise money, or funders, wherever you are, to fund them. There should be no reasons why geographical barriers are a barrier to funding. And then the third reason is we're completely meritocratic. So what I mean by that is, you know, once again, we build we built Indiegogo to democratize fundraising. We did not want to be a gatekeeper. We did not want to be a decision maker as to who gets on the site and then who gets promoted and all that kind of stuff. It should not be up to us. It should be up to the campaign owners and the communities themselves. So the reason um, for that is uh, we believe in democratizing fundraising. So with that, we've created an algorithm called the Gogo Factor, which is a measure of the campaign's activity and the responsiveness of the community. And it's those factors that actually drive the Gogo Factor, and it's the Gogo Factor that determines which campaigns get on the homepage, get placement, get promoted in our press, and all that kind of stuff. So whenever campaign owners come groveling to me and they're like, hey, if I send you cupcakes, will you put me on the homepage? I say, well, I love cupcakes, but not worth it. Save your money. Uh, put it back into your campaign because it's actually up to you. It's not up to me. If you work hard, you hustle, and you get, get an engaged community, you'll end up on the homepage. What's the hardest thing about providing a service like that? Like, the key is scale, it's scaling up, but in many ways, uh, you've, you've described there, one of, I got the sense that one of the hardest things is setting the ground rules almost, but once that's in place, uh, is it a case then of dealing with perception or dealing with security? How, how, what, are, what are the challenges for Indiegogo in terms of uh, reaching, reaching more people? Uh, well, there, one of the people, people think is, there, is it going to be a risk? You know, what happens uh, when some fraud goes up or whatever? What do you filter? How do you curate? All that kind of stuff. And when we, when we get asked that question, we say, we actually don't curate. That's the power of it. And anything is possible, as long as it's legal. And so we have systems on the back end to catch stuff that's not legit, and we take that down right away. Again, that's the power of us being a very uh, data-driven and kind of algorithm-driven company. So same thing with the GoGo Factor, which is data and algorithms. Same thing on the fraud side. We, we, we pull that kind of stuff stuff down. We also create a very transparent system for funders to communicate directly with campaign owners. So if they're not sure about what they're funding, they have they have the communication platform to, to actually engage with the campaign owner learn a little bit more before they decide to fund. What's next for Indiegogo? I mean, we're in a world where I can just pull out a smartphone and be doing as much as I can do on a computer, for example. Uh, soon, uh, well, if soon, if not now, you can do stuff on your TV, you've got smart TV. Where do you see future technology trends impacting how you guys uh, will reach new audiences, deliver the service to other people? I mean, do you even see a future where, we, where Indiegogo can integrate with a live TV channel? The, I mean, the world is our oyster. It's, it's really exciting to be at Indiegogo right now because we're growing leaps and bounds. And I think it's because we're providing a service that people really need. So people who need to raise money, they need to do it fast, they need to do it efficiently, and they need to do it um, in a very social and robust and simple way. We've provided that. We've also provided a very uh, relevant experience for funders. So if you go on Indiegogo, the campaigns that you're seeing because of the GoGo factor are all campaigns that have been community validated. So if you are in the mood of like finding something cool in your neighborhood or finding something cool in like an area of interest, if you're a big gamer or if you're a big film buff or if you're a big coffee shop goer, you can fund that kind of stuff 
uh, right away. So our main goal is to continue to build the flexibility to make the funding and raising money experience super, super seamless. An example of that is, and another differentiator for us, is that Indiegogo, I think, is the only crowdfunding platform that offers two type of funding options. So for campaign owners, what that means is they can either choose the flexible funding model or they can choose the fixed funding model. Uh, the fixed funding model is the model where you set your funding target, you set your goal, your funding deadline. If you don't hit your if you don't hit your funding target, you don't get any of the money. The money goes back to your funders. You only get the money if you hit your funding target. But we also offer the flexible funding model, which is by far the more popular model, um, and that's where you set your funding target and you get the money whether or not you reach your goal. So again, that's flexibility. Uh, we also work with PayPal and, cre and credit cards, so it's very easy for people to pay. We don't make anybody sign up for a new payment system, anything like that. So as the future unfolds, there are going to be new payment systems, there's going to be new ways uh, to pay online, offline, mobile, all this kind of stuff, and we, we plan to be there uh, to be right where, the, where our users are and make it super easy and fun and efficient to raise money. That's